Think about the earth there as a piece of real estate of which we all have some sort of uh, portion that belongs to us. So that's what this search stewardship science is about. It's collectively looking at this planet and coming to these solutions, thinking about complex systems. And that is what we believe should be there in your first year course. The earth stewardship science is a search for something fundamental about the interactive dynamics of complex natural and social systems. About how such complex systems emerge, how they dissipate. Earth stewardship science, which is a new science that we're developing at the moment at NNMU, got a new Earth stewardship science research unit that is uh, starting. And this research unit is across the university as a whole. Every faculty will be involved in this, not just the physicists and by themselves and the social scientists and themselves. It's Earth in terms of the commons, something that we all own, something we're all part of. When you talk about CO2 emissions and who is a champion and who is not, it is, for scientists, it's very important to say how you define that. You could say, and I heard this several times, China is the biggest emission uh, emitter of CO2 as a nation. But a scientist might be more interested to see how is the CO2 emitted per person? We call that per capita. And if we do it, in other words, per person, if you understand that China has uh, nearly three billion people, their output per person is actually very low. And if you then do the same calculation for the United States, who have 250 million people, the per capita, the per person output is very much bigger. How resilient is the Earth, the impacts of human activities? At what stage do we really get worried about global warming? That we're not going to be able to cope as a species? So what are the boundaries of a safe operating space for humanities? It's all very well in saying climate change is happening, but what is the boundary where it becomes an unsafe place? Here's a, the last one, I'll just say, how do we know where the end begins? With global warming, how do we know where that place is, where the end has started already, where we can do no longer anything about it? This is actually a quote from a very famous African writer. How do we know where the end begins? It, I think it's a fantastic question to go away with. And that we have to move into a completely different way of thinking about systems social systems, natural systems, they're very complex. And that's something I believe your generation is going to have to come to grips with. And here's some, some stewardship of systems. How does nature work? Natural system. How does the earth work? How does the earth actually suck up some of this CO2 in a natural way? How can it cope with it? How do societies work as a system? If you're a social scientist, it's easy to say, well, we've got all these social engagements. And but how does the system as a whole, everybody in the world, social systems, how does that work? How does, the interactive, how does this interactive system, how does a complex natural system and a complex social system, how do they really interact in, in detail? And how do these systems collapse? And the ethics that we've been living on today is almost a statement there are no great limits to growth. But there are people that say growth for the sake of growth is the, is the ideology of the cancer cell. So we need to think very carefully. Every time the government tells you we need to grow at 6% or 8%, what do they mean? And you need to know in the back of your hand in your pocket, if we grow by, by 3%, then it takes 24 years to double whatever we have now. If we grow our CO2 at 3% per year, then it takes 24 years for it to double the amount that we have now. If we do that at 10%, it only takes seven years. So these are numbers that you must be so familiar with when you, that you understand what really means by growth, because growth can get completely out of hand. 
So that is where this background, where I come from, the global system science, or what I call Earth stewardship science. Emma is my creator, acquired knowledge and paradigm shift in thinking, collaborating, and evolving in this dialogue. I'm going to take one, one example of this, because this, this is very pertinent to what you're thinking about. Uh, where will our energy come from? Eskom tells you every day, turn off the, the uh, geysers, uh, use less water in your, uh, in your uh, uh, house. We are very much at a, what I would call a critical point. If you go over that critical point, things will collapse. And we're, this is a very, South Africa, a very good example of where we are very much at that critical point. Can we manage this? Where is our energy going to come from?